Welcome to Lofty Pursuits and Public Displays of Confection in Tallahassee, Florida, where we make hard candy. Today we're going to be making Red Hot Cinnamon Hearts. The machine we're going to use today is our Thomas Mill Press from 1871. We just finished making a batch of acid drops and now we're going to be changing the rollers out for the cinnamon hearts. The order in production of flavors during the day is important because certain flavors linger on the surfaces like the candy cooling table and overwhelm the next flavor. So we can go from something like banana to raspberry to apple to the acid drops to the cinnamon, but we shouldn't put the cinnamon first, and we don't. The machine and the rollers were made by the Thomas Mills Corporation in the late 1800s. They were out of Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. The manufacture of heart-shaped drop rollers in the 1800s is not surprising, as Valentine's Day hit its height during the Victorian era. And that makes sense to me, but what doesn't make sense to me is the shape of the heart itself. Let's think about the heart shape as we pour the sugar on the candy cooling table. This is another Victorian piece of equipment. It was made in 1891 in Hartsfield, Connecticut, and it has a water cooling system in it that helps a lot with us getting the candy down from the high temperature as fast as possible. Before we poured the candy, we had already added the cinnamon oil, the pure cinnamon oil that makes a red hot a red hot, in the pot. The heart shape is everywhere in our society. This shape, we make candy out of it, we make jewelry out of it. Why do we have lockets look like this, instead of lockets looking like, say this? We're going to make three different colors of hearts for the assortment. And we're going to start by adding red food coloring and then pink food coloring. And we're going to stir it in and it's going to bubble and boil, driving all the water out of the food coloring because we don't want sticky candy and that's what water gets us. There are many theories for why we use the heart shape. The most common one is a plant called the Silphium. It lived in ancient Rome and its seeds were supposedly heart-shaped. I say supposedly because the Romans hunted it to extinction. We have images of the seeds on coins, it was popular in trade, it was even a gift given for romantic love. But was it the source? Probably not. It went extinct 2,000 years ago and the heart being used as a symbol that we use it today didn't become popular until the 10 to 1200s. Would a thousand years have passed and all of a sudden the symbol came back into popularity, especially during the Dark Ages? The candy cooling table has done its job and we have three sections of colors. One is red, one is pink, and the other one is sort of the natural amber of the sugar. And we're going to turn that into white a little later. And this is one of the things that makes the heart assortment so cool. And I'll explain that to you in a minute. When we poured the candy on the table, it was a smooth liquid that poured on, and it filled every surface perfectly. The problem is, when it's cooled down and it's now the part touching the table has sort of a rubbery quality, it's created a suction, a vacuum, and it's acting like a suction cup. We've got to break that vacuum before we cut the candy off the table. The sugar that was touching the bars and the bottom of the table have cooled off a lot more than in the center, and we've got to even this heat. So we pull it out, and it's sort of like a bag of molten sugar, or a swimming pool filled with liquid sugar. And we get to dump it on the table and mix it together, because we need to average the heat of the sugar. The bars on the table cool it off so much, in fact, that I can touch the parts that are against the bars with my bare fingers or my thinly gloved fingers. It isn't until I fold it back and forth a few times that the candy gets so hot I have to handle it with the thick gloves. And it's time for me to make that amber candy white. I do this by pulling it on the hook. Pulling it folds air bubbles in. And by pulling it, I fold millions and millions of air bubbles in and they reflect light. But they also makes the candy somewhat porous. It gives it a lot of microscopic surface area, much more than the solid colored candies. What this means is when, is when it goes into your mouth, your saliva dissolves it faster. You get a stronger flavor, and it means each piece of candy in this batch doesn't taste the same. If you ever make it to or near Tallahassee, please come and visit. We're located about five minutes off I-10, and we serve a great breakfast and a lunch. We also serve ice cream until 10 p.m. and our great soda fountain. We'll do a video about that someday. We also have a toy section because we started as a toy store. And of course, we have our candy section. We don't make candy every day and we don't have a firm schedule as to when we manufacture the candy. But odds are good that if you come, we will be making candy and you can come and watch. We get visitors in off the interstate every day and we hope we can see you one day.
If you can't make it by the store, you can get this candy and any of our other candies on our website, which is at www.pd.net. We ship worldwide. There was a birthday party going on while I made this batch of candy. There's a reason we call it public display as a confection. We do it right out front. Many of the early depictions of hearts as we think of a symbolic heart may be speculative, but the earliest one that it's clear in that I can find is from the walls of the Hagia Sophia, a giant church that's now a mosque in Istanbul. The mosaic was probably made in the mid-1200s. Very, very much. Thank you. <laughs> if you notice, the machine does not put out pieces of candy, but sheets of candy that are connected by very thin pieces of sugar. These thin pieces are important because they keep the candy together so I can move them across the table to where they can cool and not stick to each other. I wish you Due to surviving artwork, we can tell that sometime around the 12 to 1400s, the heart was adapted as an icon through middle of the middle of Europe, Germany, and places like that. But it had also traveled by the 1500s. Trade had brought the heart shape to Japan by the 1530s, and we have evidence of it being adopted in that culture as well as a similar symbol. It makes me feel good to know that a technique that's as old as the ones that I'm doing is still entertaining kids today and can compete with the electronic entertainment that they have at their disposal. During the next few hundred years, the heart shape gets used more and more, and it really is popularized in the center of Europe. Germany, France, uh, Switzerland, it's used for a suit for the playing cards that we know to this day, but in the 1530s when the playing cards started, it started traveling with the traders of Europe, and it ended up with the Nambian trade to Japan getting to Japan, and by the mid-1500s, it was used as a symbol for the goddess of archers in Japan, or rather the heart of the goddess of archers, showing that it's a heart shape, and they knew what it was representing. A few notes on this batch. First of all, it made about 5,000 pieces. Second of all, the machine was wobbling a bit. Sorry about that. I didn't realize that a nut that was attaching to the table was loose until it was too late to fix. The batch had to go on. And three, the girls had a great time. Now you may ask yourself, why are drop candy called drops, like lemon drops or cough drops? It's because one way to break them is to pick them up and drop them. These pieces are a bit small to do this without them flying everywhere, so we just sort of smush them together. And if you're wondering, it's more fun than popping bubble wrap. Now all that is left to do is to blend the three color of hearts evenly so that everybody gets an even mix in every bag. And then of course, to enjoy them. They're beautiful red hots, they're hot, they're spicy, the cinnamon is crisp and clear. But that doesn't answer, why are they still heart shaped? And I think the only answer I can come up with is, we don't know. I mean, we have ideas, we can see origins, we can see how the popularity moved. But the icon seems to have developed itself and is independent of anything else that makes sense. And by the time the Victorian period, it just went wild, and now it's just entrenched in society worldwide. So maybe we shouldn't question it, and just pop a red hot into our mouth and enjoy our cinnamon hearts. We were really glad the girls were there that day. Our quality control tester was out, and the girls pitched in. It was a big help. Of course, the moms got the tastes first. You see, we have to thank them for bringing the girls in the first place. Remember the bits of sugar that connected the hearts? Well, we have to do something about them now. They've been broken out and they've been turned into dust. So what we're going to do is we're going to just shake the uh, candy and get rid of the dust. It'll keep the candy from sticking together on the bags a bit and make everything look prettier. Thank you for watching this video. If you like this video, please check out our other videos here on YouTube. And of course, you can also follow us on Facebook at PD Confection at uh, Twitter and at Instagram at Lofty Pursuits. On these sites, we often post links to these videos before they go up in the public eye at YouTube. We sort of post secret links so that you guys can see the videos while they're in the editing process. And of course, you can find our candy at www.pd.net, or if you're ever in Tallahassee, you can visit us at, in our store at Lofty Pursuits. We're open from 7 a.m. to 10 p.m., and we're right off I-10, the interstate that goes through Tallahassee. Thank you again for watching, and we appreciate you enjoying what we do. And stick around for a sec for some links to our most popular videos.